Mother-in-law thinks I cheated on my dear husband because we are having a girl, then physically assaults me at 8 months pregnant. Original post. This is a long one, so strap in. I am 26 female and dear husband is 30 male. Mother-in-law is 70 years old. Her and father-in-law had my dear husband later in life as a last chance to have a kid. Dear husband has a name like John William Smith IV. The name has been passed down for literally generations. I will also mention as it's important that there has not been a girl born on his side of the family in more than 100 years. There's a huge running joke that the men in his family cannot produce female babies. So fast forward to our wedding day in 2017. I've had a pretty good relationship with mother-in-law up until this point. Wedding was great, beautiful ceremony, funny speeches, everything was great. Really, until it's the end of the night and we are getting ready to go leave to enjoy our honeymoon suite and she looks me dead in the eye and says, now go make us our John William Smith V. I nervously laughed and we departed. Well, ladies and gents, I indeed did make a beautiful baby with my dear husband over those two weeks and who would have thought, a baby girl. Everyone was so shocked when we announced it was a girl and most of the family denied it up until the moment she was born. That's when the horrible comment started. Whenever dear husband isn't around, mother-in-law and her family members will make snarky comments like, I wonder where she got that nose, it's definitely not dear husband's. For your info, my baby, as beautiful as she is, is strikingly and obviously my dear husband's. She genuinely looks more and more like him as the first year has gone by, and even more so approaching too. Well, as it would happen, we are now expecting our second baby. And yes, another girl. I begged dear husband not to tell mother-in-law the gender when we found out, as I just wanted to enjoy a bit more of this pregnancy before she ruined it. I had decided to keep the mean comments his mother made to me about our first daughter to myself, as she's old and in poor health, and I felt guilty about potentially ruining their relationship when she probably doesn't have many years left to be around. I figure I'll add here that mother-in-law isn't dying or anything, she's just had extremely poor health her whole life, smoking a pack or more of cigarettes a day, eats garbage constantly, drinks only Diet Coke, refuses exercise and so on. I literally offered this woman water once after she almost passed out from walking 15 steps, and she gagged and said, that's disgusting, water makes me nauseous, get me my Diet Coke. So anyways, he insists on announcing it at our next visit, and holy turd you all. As soon as she heard it was another girl, tears welled in her eyes, and she started shaking her head back and forth and sobbing. She then started yelling at me, called me a hoe, and demanded I get out of her house. Dear husband immediately stands up and starts yelling at her, asking what her problem is and that she needs to apologize to me and watch her mouth in front of her grandkids. She says they're broken whales, not ours, not ours, those girls are not ours, she's a hoe, a loose woman. My son did not make those girls. I start crying hysterically and pick up my daughter, who is utterly confused as to why daddy is yelling at grandma and mommy is now crying. Mother-in-law then looks at me and starts yelling, I let you get away with it the first time. I took you in as family. I allow my son to believe he fathered that brat, but I will not allow it again. Dear husband is now freaking pissed y'all. Something I should mention here is that, while dear husband prepared his whole life to having a son, he was thrown on his butt when our daughter was born. He never knew that he could love any girl in the world as much as he loves our daughter. He has made several comments over the past year and a half that he never knew how deep love could go before he held our baby girl. I can 100% assure you that if he had to save me, our daughter, or his mom, he'd save our daughter 10 over 10 times. He gets extremely angry and starts screaming at her that she is out of line and how dare she call his daughter names. He then goes on to say that we are leaving and until she comes to her senses, she will never see any of us again. She tried to say something more, but he cuts her off and yells at her, By the way mom, I love that little girl more than I ever loved you, as he is shuttling us out the door. I cried and cried and broke down, and told dear husband all the little comments she and her family have said to me when he's not around while we drive the two hours home. He was so angry at them all, and has been amazing in comforting me through it. We went no contact for a few months, and everything seemed to be going great. We blocked her and father-in-law's phone numbers and hadn't heard from them except through other relatives over Facebook, which we either told them to not attempt to relay messages from mother-in-law or they would be blocked or ignored them completely. Then, when I was nearing my due date, we decided to be the bigger person and reach out to her and father-in-law and offer them a chance to make things right. She whined and whines that she misses dear husband and granddaughter. We agreed to meet for dinner at their house after a few weeks for a proper talk and apology from her. We agreed that daughter should not be present so my sister was set to babysit her. We arrive, dinner is served and we are trying to make small talk when dear husband is like, yeah, mom, 
This has all been nice but we need to talk about what happened and the things you said last time we were here. I know and you know that you owe my wife an apology. Mother-in-law then looks at dear husband and says, yes, do you have the test? Dear husband, what? Mother-in-law, the paternity test. I am not apologizing until I'm proven wrong. And we both know I'm right. You cannot be the father and the fact that you have now apparently made two girls is ridiculous. Dear husband, what the heck is wrong with you? I start to cry and go to get up to grab my things and go to the car. Mother-in-law, oh no you don't. She shoots up, rounds the table and grabs my shirt, then proceeds to scream at me, how dare you try to run away from this. You're a freaking whore and you need to own up to this problem. Dear husband screams at her to get her hands off of me and starts to make his way towards us. She then decides that I cannot be allowed to leave at any cost with her son, so she slaps me as hard as she can across my face. I push her arm away from me as I let out a scream from the shock of being slapped. Dear husband then gets in between me and his mom and starts to scream at her. He tells father-in-law to call the cops right now. Father-in-law ignores him and tries to calm mother-in-law down, insisting that we can deal with this. Dear husband is furious and I'm crying hysterically. He grabs my hand and we are making our way to the door when mother-in-law grabs a snow globe from a shelf and throws it directly at me and it hits me right in the back of my head. It didn't shatter or anything, but it did end up hitting me on the base and cut my head open. I fell to my knees from the pain and before dear husband can put together what just happened, she is grabbing anything she can find to throw in my direction. I'm on my knees on the ground holding my head with one hand and my belly with the other, being almost nine months pregnant as a cascade of random items are being thrown at me. Dear husband is screaming at the top of his lungs for her to stop and she proceeds to try to get close enough to kick me as hard as she can. Thankfully, she is old and in bad health, so she loses momentum quickly. And as a last resort, dear husband pushes his mom and she falls back into a shelf by the front door and he rushes me out. I'm crying and freaking out and yelling she kicked my stomach over and over and he drives me to the hospital. I end up getting six stitches in my head and then being monitored in hospital for four days because she kicked my belly. The baby ended up being fine and the hospital demanded we file a police report. We find out that when dear husband pushed his mom into the shelf, she ended up breaking two fingers and is claiming the excessive force hurt her neck very badly. Father-in-law called an ambulance for her and she claimed that me and dear husband assaulted her in her doorway after they refused to let us in for a free dinner. Cops showed up and took our side of the story and compared our own report that we filed once at the hospital. They told us that mother-in-law is demanding to press charges against dear husband for assault while we are pressing charges against her. So then my dear husband gets arrested, but then quickly released after father-in-law is forced to tell the truth and mother-in-law then gets arrested. Father-in-law is now begging us to drop the charges as no one was hurt. What? I was freaking hurt and my baby could have been hurt and that we are being cruel to lock up an elderly woman. He insists that we drop the charges, say it was all a misunderstanding, and he puts mother-in-law in counseling. Thing is, because my injuries were documented in hospital, we literally can't drop the charges even if we were stupid enough to do so. Because it was filed through a hospital, there's no way it can just go away. We are currently at home waiting for baby number two to arrive, I am on a strict bed rest order, and dear husband has taken the week off of work to help pamper me and take care of our daughter. I ask dear husband if once baby number two arrives, we get paternity tests for both girls to send to his mom in jail as a huge F you. He thinks it's a hilarious idea and thinks we should also make copies and send them to all the relatives who were entertaining his mom's craziness along with a written letter saying goodbye. That none of them will ever see us or his daughters again and that he hopes they're all happy knowing that they've ruined any chance they had to have a relationship with him or our children ever again. We are so thankful that our baby girl is okay through all of this and so so relieved that we decided against bringing our older daughter to their house that night. We can only imagine what could have happened had she been struck with something. My due date is currently 8 days away and I have an appointment the day of to discuss induction if she hasn't arrived by then and baby number 1 was a week overdue and I had to be induced last time. Any support for us is wonderful and greatly appreciated. I will update if any more craziness happens in the future. Now for the top comments, before reading the updates. Listen, in my area, there was a family who hadn't had a girl in three or four generations. When someone had a girl in the family, they didn't deny her. They paid for a damn billboard to brag about the first baby girl in generations. Still not normal per se, but a lot better than what you have had to go through. Don't bother with sending the paternity test results unless it's attached to a permanent restraining order, protecting your family from crazy. My husband's immediate and extended family is all boys, except two stepdaughters. 
We were the first in two generations to have a bio girl last year and his parents cried from pure happiness. This woman is absolutely nuts. The billboard is chaotic good energy. OP's mother-in-law is just chaotic evil. Stay far away from those people and never look back. Send them the paternity test, give them a last F you, and continue to press charges. These people are monsters and don't deserve you or those beautiful daughters of yours. Do not accept their apologies and leave them to rot. Sorry, this sounds aggressive I know, but holy hell, what is wrong these people? I don't think it sounds excessive at all. Had that kick been stronger and well-placed, that child could have died. Press charges, no contact. I personally wouldn't even send them copies of DNA evidence in case they try to file for grandparents' rights. No one needs that kind of stress, just pretend like they don't exist. Good grief the fact that he tried to get the charges dropped makes me wonder if his father-in-law breathed any non-toxic air since he's been with mother-in-law. She is truly one of the worst mother-in-laws I've read about here. Her father-in-law and all their flying monkeys do deserve to lose contact with your family. I am truly sorry for all that you've gone through with her. Now for the first update. I have read most of your guys' responses and I want to thank you all for the kind words and support. I wish I could respond to everyone individually. The family who got a girl after several generations and they took out a billboard. Holy crap do I envy the joy and pure welcoming this family got. For those of you with similar experiences, who had a girl after several generations whose family was overjoyed, that actually makes me feel so good for you all, as it makes me realize that most families out there are wonderful supportive people, and it makes my heart happy. Thank you so so much kind strangers for the awards. I cannot thank you enough. Father-in-law is making mother-in-law's bail this morning, and she will be released from holding. We are going through with filing a restraining order and a no-contact order. They have to be two separate filings in my state. We will receive a court date within a few weeks, so we have time to prepare. Dear husband spoke with an attorney this morning, and the attorney mentioned that it would be a great idea to file for a paternity test through the court. It would be a lot cheaper this way, and there can't be any question about the authenticity this way. It also won't be presented until it is used as evidence for the case. Dear husband has been nothing short of amazing. He is supportive and very protective of me and his girls, but I know he is having a hard time dealing with the emotions of his mother potentially serving a jail sentence. I really feel awful that this whole situation has happened this way. I feel guilt that maybe if I had done a paternity test with first daughter when the mean comments started, then all of this could have been prevented. Dear husband thinks I'm being too hard on myself, I didn't cause any of this, and he's confident that mother-in-law would have caused problems no matter what. It's all waiting for now. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Waiting for baby to arrive. Waiting for confirmation of the restraining and no contact orders. Waiting for court date. Waiting to see how much my hospital bill is going to cost us. Dear husband is out right now with oldest daughter getting me breakfast and some snacks. I cannot tell you all how much I love this man and the family we have made. Family is what you make it. You don't have to settle for disrespect and seeking approval. He has made me realize how much he truly loves and believes in me at a huge cost. I feel so bad that he now views his mother as a despicable stranger and I hope that me and the girls can continue to fill this new void for him going forward. I will update in a few weeks once our new baby is here and once court stuff is done. Thank you again everyone for allowing me this platform for support. Now for the second update. Hello everyone. My original post gained quite a bit of attention and was then posted in a YouTube video which made the moderators decide to take it down. For clarification, I don't care that it was shared outside of Reddit, as I have not given any specific names or details that could identify myself or others involved, nor will I ever give those details. So, that being said, I don't care if it's shared, and I'd appreciate it if mods could leave my posts up. I feel like I need to clarify this as I've received many messages of people angry and accusing me of deleting my original post when that was not the case. I even attempted to have it put back up without success. So, brief of my original is, I have two daughters, husband's side of the family hadn't had a girl born in generations, and mother-in-law came to the conclusion that I must have cheated on dear husband, as he can't make girls. She then attacks me while almost nine months pregnant with our second daughter. Dear husband accidentally injures his mom while trying to protect me. Hospital calls police and we file a report. His mom files her own report, but it soon is clear that dear husband didn't do anything intentionally, just protecting me. Baby does end up being alright in the end, even after mother-in-law kicked me a handful of times while I was on the ground. The doctors explained it to me as, imagine putting an egg inside of a water balloon, then slapping it several times, it's hard to make contact with the actual egg and crack it, but still a scary situation. 
Yeah, that comparison didn't ease my mind at all, but they monitored me and the baby for a few days, and I was released and put on rest until she arrived. So, this is where it turns for the worst. We are home, and dear husband has been a rock, very supportive and comforting to me the whole time. We went no contact with mother-in-law and father-in-law, and I genuinely thought he was on my side. I had come up with the idea to do paternity tests on our girls and send them to mother-in-law as to get back at her, and it seemed like a great idea. We got in contact with a lawyer, and he suggested that we take the paternity tests through the court so we have it as evidence, and then the results couldn't be contested as fraudulent or fake. That sounded great right. Well, over the next few days, dear husband got more and more depressed. He started trying to get me to entertain the idea of minimizing mother-in-law's actions and chalking up her behavior to old age. While I am aware that she's older, she's pretty sound-minded. I told him that she will be getting full screenings for her mental health when we go to court, and that while yes she's old, she doesn't get to attack me and accuse me of horrible things and use her age as an excuse. If she's found to have some mental issues going on, then I can deal with that, but that doesn't mean I ever want to be around her or have her around my kids. A few days go by and I'm nearing my induction day because baby girl isn't making her entrance, and I find out that dear husband has been talking with father-in-law and mother-in-law behind my back. We get in a big fight, and he tells me that he still wants his mom to meet her granddaughter, and that we can put this aside until the baby is here. Then afterwards once she's gotten to meet her, we can resume the legal issues. I am crying at this point, as I thought he was supporting me through this, but in reality, he caved in no less than four days to his mom. I reminded him that we have put in for a restraining order and no contact order, and that he has now broken it by contacting them. His response, well, the no contact order is issued to you, not me. And the restraining order hasn't been approved yet, so mother-in-law can come meet baby girl number two before we get approved without breaking any rules. All I could do was shake my head and cry. I put my foot down and said absolutely not, and I couldn't believe he'd let his mom around me or the baby after she could have killed one of us. He said that I was overreacting, as the baby was not injured, and she wasn't actually trying to hurt the baby, just me. What? She kicked my very pregnant belly repeatedly, after she threw a freaking snow globe at my head. We got in a huge fight about me not forgiving her and holding grudges and being unreasonable, and eventually he just left. Where did he go? Yep, his mom's house a few hours away. He then called me sobbing and told me that if I could see his mom right now, I'd understand. Apparently when he pushed her while she was assailing me, he indeed broke two of her fingers, and she sprained her neck when she fell back into a shelving unit. She's laid up on a sofa in her living room, can't walk, and in a severe depression. I should feel awful according to him. The least I could do is let her meet her new grandchild, and then figure out where to go from there. I'm so infuriated at this point, because not only has he retreated to his mom's house, he left me alone with our oldest daughter who is two, while I'm supposed to be in bed rest with freaking stitches in my head, and an 8-pound baby in my uterus who refuses to come out, and I am so exhausted. He doesn't come home for the next 4 days until I'm supposed to check into the hospital for my scheduled induction. My sister comes to watch my oldest daughter, and dear husband takes me to the hospital for the induction. We get set up, and they are poking me with things, shoving arms up where they don't belong, pumping me with pitocin, and waiting to see if baby will come. He mostly sat in the room on his tablet, as I was admittedly pretty cold and grumpy with him still, and wasn't acknowledging him very much. Finally, I started making progress with labor and things were going well. Baby was starting to move down, and I was nearing the point where I needed to push. He did end up putting his tablet away and trying to get more involved, and at this point, I wasn't going to push the support away as I was literally trying to push a baby out of me with no medication. Finally the baby started to crown, and dear husband looks at the baby's head, looks at the nurse standing next to the doctor and asks, when do you do the paternity test? I stopped mid-push, looked at my husband and screamed, what the fuck? The nurse was silent, looking back and forth between me and dear husband. The doctor then looks at dear husband and says, sir, we are here to deliver and take care of babies, if you have other personal relationship issues, you need to figure that out afterwards. We focus on baby and mom, this is not the place to ask questions like that. I immediately start crying hysterically and babbling stuff like, it's not like that, it's his baby, his mom is psycho and stuff. I am so freaking mortified at the thought that these nurses and doctor now think there's a chance my baby isn't my husband's, and there's no way I can explain the situation to them. I immediately felt judged by the nurse and couldn't help but feel like I had been robbed of a beautiful moment. My mind completely shut down, and the short time between crowning and when baby comes out ended up taking an extremely long time because of how distraught I was. I was so angry at my husband. I asked him how could he do that to me, 
How could he ask that in front of the doctor and nurses, when he knows it's his daughter and it was my idea to do the tests in the first place? After the baby came out, I just held her and she was beautiful and perfect, but I was so distraught. I couldn't look at my husband, and I hate to admit this, but I wouldn't let him hold her. I was just so angry. He left, and when he came back about an hour later, he said that his mom wanted pictures of the baby, and he took out his phone and I smacked it out of his hand. He got angry and left. My sister had to pick us up from the hospital and took us home two days later. In my state, you have to take the baby back in two days after being home to do tests and a checkup to make sure baby is maintaining weight and that there's no obvious signs of neglect. So we took her in for the check and then went to a clinic to do the paternity test the same day. The next few days at home were awful. I can't even look at him and he has avoided being around me or the baby for days. He barely has even looked at her and is practically ignoring our oldest daughter. We got in a fight because I was trying to breastfeed the baby and my oldest daughter was crying because Netflix wasn't working and I started crying because I was so overwhelmed. And he just looked at our daughter and said, mommy didn't pay the Netflix bill because she's mad at grandma. I yelled at him to not say crap like that to a child. He said he just thought I didn't pay it because his mom uses our account at her house. I just forgot to pay it. It had nothing to do with that. He made several comments to our daughter over the next few days, like, daddy's going to go see grandma. You can't come because mommy hates grandma. Then leave me with a hysterical two-year-old and a newborn. I'm not going to lie, I know that I'm dealing with crazy hormones and this is a horrible patch, but I seriously considered telling him I wanted a divorce right there and then. He left, I tried my best to cool off, but I couldn't. I have actually convinced myself that I want a divorce over his behavior. Am I going crazy? Is this enough to seriously consider leaving him? We got the results for the paternity test three days later, and for anyone who ever doubted me, y'all can ride with mother-in-law to crazy town. He's the father. He cried and told me he never doubted it and that he knew he was the dad. I told him that we would do a second test on our oldest daughter, and that I was going to start packing our stuff and I was going to go move in with my sister. He bawled and bawled and said he didn't need one for our oldest daughter. I demanded we take one, as I would want it as proof for court whenever we get to have my case heard. I told him that I never cheated on anyone in my life including him, and how much it hurt me that he said that in the hospital room and made the nurses and doctors think he doubted our daughter at all. He tried to apologize and hug me, but I pushed him away and told him he should leave while I packed up some things. My oldest daughter, my baby and myself are now staying at my sister's house, and he has told me that he refuses to take the second paternity test for our oldest daughter and is going to make his mom write out a very long apology letter to me. He wants me to come home, but I just can't even look at him the same. I feel like all the love I had for him has been ripped away, and I feel so angry towards him. I'm just trying to take care of our girls, but he won't stop calling me. I told him he can see the girls anytime he wants, but he can't take them near his mom, and she is not allowed to be around them at all. I'm going to give myself a few weeks to sort out my feelings, but is this not enough to justify a divorce? I don't exactly want to go through with a divorce, but I really just can't even look at him the same, and I don't know how I could ever get past this. You can divorce him and his mother anytime you want. This is more than enough reason to do so. This is far more than enough. He's clearly showing you that his mommy is more important to him than you are. I don't think you're overreacting at all. He'll undoubtedly cry, plead, tell you that he's changed and will never see his mommy again. Beg for another chance and cry again. Only you can decide if you want to give him another chance. The parental alienation he's using on your elder daughter would be enough for me never to try again, but that's me. But if you did decide that, I'd be putting several very clear conditions in place. 1. In order to give him another chance, he needs to completely cut off his parents permanently. No ifs, no buts, no questions. It's you or them for the rest of time. 2. He needs extensive personal therapy to deprogram those guilt buttons and manipulation techniques his mommy installed in him from birth like a year's weekly therapy before you'll even countenance trying again. 3. Once you do give the relationship another go, extensive couples therapy into the foreseeable future. He has breached your trust in so many ways that it's going to take you a long time to trust him again, and therapy will be vital to that. Also, making his mommy write an apology. That's about as useful as tits on a bull. Any apology which someone else has to make you do is no apology at all. And I don't think you can apologize for attacking someone, particularly a pregnant woman, and expect everything to go back to normal. Yeah, the writing an apology BS is just another instance of him trying to protect mommy from legal action. That woman should be in jail, period. She wasn't too old and frail to attack you, and she isn't too old and frail for prison. Wow, that was such an agonizing thing for me to read. I am so 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 sorry. 
I would definitely give it some time for your sake to get over the crazy new mom hormones. But in my opinion, I would at least take a very long break from the relationship with divorce on the table. Your husband justified straight up abuse toward you and there's nothing saying mother-in-law would not do it again or take it out on the little one god forbid. You should by all means make it clear to your husband that if he really cares about your marriage then he has a lot of work to do. And both of you need to go to marriage counseling as soon as possible. Good luck and hugs. The first part ends here. Click the link in the description to watch the second and closing part.